And we are rolling on November 30th, 2017, here in Calm 104 at UCLA, where it's a beautiful day. The sunshine is shining. And we're about to address a very pressing question that at first seems silly, but after you hear the evidence, you may actually be convinced that it's not so silly after all. After all, one might argue that uh, an armed society is a polite society. So, the question before the House is, should we <coughs> arm everyone? Arm everyone on the affirmative or the government side is Ryan C. And on the negative is Bianca. B. Bianca. B. Bianca B. Whatever. Just kidding. It's so more consistent. Am I all set? Yes, please. Oh, start. Okay. Well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ryan, and today I will be debating resolved that this house should arm everybody. And to uh, contract to that first statement that it might seem silly, all of us were here based off of the one fact that the United States of America was founded on the principle of everybody having arms and everybody being able to carry arms, as stated in the Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. So this proposition is to be presented as a policy case in the affirmative, and I'd like to define a few terms, and obviously the first is the action to arm is to supply or provide with weapons. Uh, and gun control is the set of laws or policies that regulate the manufacture, sale, transfer, possession, modification, or use of firearms by civilians. So to start out, what is the problem? Obviously the problem is gun violence is insane right now. Just several weeks ago we had a Las Vegas shooting, following that a Texas shooting, and did the news even cover that extensively? No, because it's become something that's happening on a daily basis here in the United States. Uh, alongside with that, gun violence and violent crimes have been on the rise, and even though in the past 20 years they've, they've decreased, according to the FBI, from 2014 to 2015, the violent crime rate increased by 3%, and to 372.6% or 372.6 occurrences per 100,000 people, and the murder rate increased by 10% during that same year, which is very significant. And quite often the crimes involve the use of guns, both legally and illegally obtained. As I had said previously, mass shootings have become commonplace and almost a daily occurrence. In an article in Newsweek from October 2017, it, it's literally titled, There's a Mass Shooting Almost Every Day in the U.S., it was noted that the most recent shooting in Las Vegas, which was the deadliest of its kind in U.S. history, was the 273rd mass shooting of the year. Guess what day it was that day? The 275th day of the year. And so, obviously with that, there's something that needs to change. Guns currently have fallen significantly in the hands of criminals and those who intend on inflicting harm on others. An article in the, from the PBS Center for Investigative Reporting in 2014 that how criminals get guns, there are a few ways they do it. The first is through straw purchases, in which someone else buys it for them who can, but they're criminals, so they obviously can't. Purchases through corrupt at home dealers, which obviously needs to change. Robberies of legally obtained weapons from law abiding gun owners, and purchases of stolen and smuggling or smuggled guns from gangs or criminal organizations. Uh, and these have created black markets, which cost us a lot to police. How big is this problem? And you're going to be thinking, you're thinking right now, why am I talking about gun problems when I'm arguing to arm everybody? Well, mass shootings occur on almost a daily basis, and according to an article in the Washington Post from November 2017, uh, think of it this way. Fatalities in mass shootings make up one half, less than one half of one percent of all the shootings in the United States. Most of the deaths come from violent crime and suicide. Uh, but within the U.S., 12,000 people each year are killed in the United States. Um, so this problem is caused by the fact that gun ownership in the U.S. is not equally distributed. There may be one area in Texas where everybody has a gun, but then you go to Los Angeles, California, maybe near UCLA, and I don't know, five people could have a gun in that sense. That's one of the issues. And while the U.S. has one of the largest per capita gun ownership levels in the world, behind Somalia and Yemen, such ownership, as I just said, is concentrated to similar areas and not spread out evenly. So what is the solution? I'd like to present to you a very simple case, one that everyone can relate to. The nation of Switzerland. They are one of the highest armed populations in the world, and their violent crime rate is one-tenth of what we have here in the United States today. So according to an article in Time from December 2012, that model has proven effective for them. Our crime rate is five murders per 100,000 by gun. In Switzerland, where there are more uh, more guns than in the United States, 
That's 0.5 murders per 100,000 people. So if you do the math, that's one tenth. Of, uh, that's 10 percent. Children at a young age are taught how to use weapons, and all adults have received training on gun safety and marksmanship. So they do it through school as well as gun uh, gun training once they're adults. A permitting system exists where anyone who wishes to own a gun may do so with the approval of the government, and that has a very swift process. If you want up to three guns, you can get one very quickly, proving you are not a criminal. Uh, the last armed conflict in Switzerland, one of the highest armed nations in the world, uh, was a standoff between Catholic factions in 1848. Uh, so if you think about it that way, Switzerland is very well off. Uh, there are only 200 to 300 instances of suicide uh, per year by gun, but that is a tiny fraction compared to the 75 million rounds per year used in target practice, shooting competitions, and the like within the nation. And an interesting fact is, the only reason the Nazis didn't invade Switzerland during World War II was because the Nazis knew everybody knew how to use a gun. So let me talk. Let me let me tell you what the problem is. Here. Where is this evidence? Huh? Well, that was in the Times article. Um, so that's one of one of them. Uh, ultimately, what is the problem? Gun culture in the United States is not the way it is in Switzerland. Gun culture here is not taken seriously. Gun culture is spread in one area from Texas and not spread into some areas in California. And that is why we have all the problems we do today with corrupt owners or corrupt sellers and people that have these guns that should not. And this solution will work simply because of the fact that in the instance where everyone owns a gun, the logical argument is that everyone will be too scared to use one in an illicit manner simply because everyone has a gun. If everyone in this room had a gun, would I want to shoot it up? No, because somebody's going to shoot me first, right? Uh, so if we were to change the culture, increase the amount of trainings that we have, and make everyone responsible gun owners, also providing everyone a gun, not only would it allow for us to be a safer society overall, but at the same time, it would give everyone the responsibility of saving lives and protecting each other in the case of another Las Vegas shooting. I now stand open to Cross-examination points to clarify. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> I tried. That, that was valiant, valiant. <coughs> okay. Go. Just go? Yeah. yeah. Go. Okay. Um, first question. Do you think the Texas shooting, Vegas, Orlando, Sandy Hook, do you think any of those shootings would happen if the assailant had had a gun? Uh... Well, obviously, with a criminal who has intent, that criminal is obviously going to get their shooting or whatever it is, their killing, done through a certain method. So maybe they wouldn't have killed as many people with a gun. However, they still would have gotten a certain amount of killings done. And I'd like to point out, in the Texas shooting, it was somebody with a gun who had stopped the shooter uh, before he could kill more people. Okay, to answer that question, the deadliest shooting in U.S. history was the biggest shooting. And he killed 58 people in a matter of 10 minutes. Do you think that would have been possible with any other weapon? Uh, well, I'm not the best judge of that. I'm sure that you could kill someone in a closer range with a knife just as effectively. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, to, to answer that point, there was, did you know on the day of the Sandy Hook shooting in Connecticut, which left almost 20 children dead, there was another attack on a kindergarten or a primary school in China, and the assailant attacked 16 children, but he had a knife, and all 16 of those children lived. Ah, well, in that case... Can I look at the audience, not him? That was an isolated incident. That may have, uh, uh, obviously, if we were to uh, re replicate that in a non-controlled setting, or one, uh, we may see different, more effective results. Uh, yes, a gun is a catalyst with respect to killing. That's what it's designed for. However, if there was somebody with a gun or a knife in that setting that could have protected those Chinese kids, then we may have, there may have been a better outcome. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah, no. <laughs> Stick a fork in me, I'm so done. All right, okay. Hey, Dion. a fork can be used to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I don't support anything else. By the way. <laughs> okay, let's hear the uh, opposition. Okay. Six minutes. I'm sorry. Refugee station. Almost. Serious topic. 
This proposition is to be presented as a policy debate taken from the negative stance in that the U.S. should definitely not harm everyone. I agree with these, the definitions set forward by my opponent, but let's nail, nail down gun violence. Um, the GVA gives a definition in 2017 that is fully inclusionary of disparate elements of gun-related incidents and that all types of shootings are included. OAS, accidental, children shooting themselves, murders, armed robberies, um, mass shootings, DGU, home invasions, the picture. That de definition is also different from guns or gun owners. Um, the term gun control, however, is, which is, a, is what the burden of resolution rests upon. Therefore, this brief should be weighed by a cost-benefit analysis of gun control, in which the advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Criterion for this debate is whether implementing effective le legislation for gun control is justified by the current threat posed to public safety by the current levels of Hold your paper down so I can see your face, please. Thank you. So what is the problem? Put simply, the current level of gun violence is unprecedented and unacceptable. Um, in just 2017, according to a GBA report, there have been 55,916 incidences of gun violence just this year. Single death homicides, domestic violence homicides, suicides, and mass shootings. Part of the reason for that is because the level of gun ownership in the U.S. is unacceptable. According to a 2012 Congressional Research Service report, there are more, there are more guns than people in the United States. The number of civilian firearms hit 310 million in 2009, eight years ago, which was the first time that the number of firearms in circulation surpassed the total population. I'd like to point out that my opponent has also kindly pointed out for me that since then the guns have increased, so that's even higher now. How big is the problem? Um, in a word, huge. Like Ryan said, there has been a mass shooting every day this year, according to CBS News 2017. Um, but gun, gun violence doesn't just refer to mass shootings. According to the U.S. CDC in 2015, nearly two-thirds of firearm deaths are suicides. When a gun is present in a situation of domestic violence, it increases the, the risk that the woman will be killed fivefold, and the gun homicide rate currently is more than 25 times the average of other developed nations. The problem gets even bigger when compared to other parts of the world. OECD data from 2010 shows that people in the U.S. are 51 times more likely to be killed by gunfire than people in the U.K. So why do we have the problem? The U.S. is an outlier on gun violence because it has way more guns than other developed nations in circulation. Where there are more guns, there are more deaths, full stop. According to a homicide literature review by the Harvard Injury Control Research Center published in 2016, more guns equals more homicide across high-income nations, across states, and in law enforcement. Part of the reason for that is because the government does nothing. Since 2011, Congress has rejected more than 100 gun control proposals, despite calls for actions after shootings like um, Newtown or Las Vegas last month. Hmm. Kim Kardashian once tweeted that one shoe bomber <laughs> tried to blow up a plane and now we take off our shoes. 1,520 mass shootings since Sandy Hook and Congress has done nothing. I have to agree with Kim Kardashian. So what's the solution? The only solution is reframing the, the um, gun control argument. And before any southerners in the room blast off about the Second Amendment, that doesn't mean gun confiscation necessarily. Um, I say reframing because the solution has two parts. First of all, better gun control, and second, better education about gun control. First up, we need to implement effective policies against gun violence, and we need to enforce those policies. That starts at the very least with a five-year recurring cycle of background checks and training, cap on mag capacity, and a ban on bump stops. Next up is education. We have to think about how we can articulate the gun control message more effectively. For example, instead of emphasizing gun control, there can be, you know, a movement for the safety of all Americans. It just has to be <coughs> recontextualized, plus in people's brains. Making the prevention of gun, gun violence a nationwide public safety emergency could galvanize the nation to cure the epidemic. Will the solution work? In another word, yes. Let's look at three different examples for proof that the only way to, to solve gun violence is through effective le le legislation. Number one, at the state level. According to a 2017 Washington Post article after Sandy Hook, Connecticut expanded background checks and required issued handgun permits, and as a result, gun crimes, gun, gun, crimes, gun crimes dropped by 40%. Number two, globally. Restrictive gun laws are proven to make a difference in curbing massacres. In Australia, four mass shootings occurred between 1987 and 96. After those incidents, public opinion turned against gun ownership, and Parliament passed stricter gun laws. Australia has not had a mass shooting since. In the UK, after 16 people were shot to death at Dunblane, a public inquiry not only tied in, not only tied in legislation by improving the, gun, the licensing system, sorry, 
but the government banned all handguns and called an, a gun amnesty in which more than 162,000 handguns that were already in civilian population were surrendered to the government. Finally, number three, my favorite example. It's impossible to have a real controlled experiment in this field, but think about this from a 2017 New Yorker article. The closest thing to an experiment in this case would be to have two contiguous countries, both with similar root populations, both subject to massive immigration from abroad, abroad sorry, and both with, huge number of, with a huge number of mentally ill or criminal people capable of mass killing. Mass killing. Does that make sense? Sorry if I messed that up. One would have reasonable gun control laws regularly reinforced, with guns available for recreation and pest control, but the kinds capable of killing many people prohibited or restricted. The country on the other side of the border would have little to no gun control measures. Then we would compare those results. One country would have a per capita rate of gun homicides seven times smaller than the other country. In case it's not obvious enough, I'm talking about Canada. And it's, it, the experiment's been done. We, we know the results. This is real. Um, <laughs> what are the advantages? Less suicides, less homicides, less domestic violence. Ultimately, the right to live free of fear. On balance, our highest value has to be public safety. Arming everyone is firmly at odds with that value. The liberty of some to own guns cannot take precedence over the liberty of everyone to live their lives free from the fear of being murdered easily by guns. I now stand open for cross examination. Thank you very much. Stand close together, please. Go. Okay, so you had mentioned basic controlled experiments between two nations, Canada and the United States, and you had mentioned Canada is the winner with, without backing up any statistics or mentioning any specifics. What about a comparison with Switzerland, who has a, even, even higher gun ownership per capita in the United States and has one-tenth of the violent crime rate uh, on top of only 200 to 300 suicides per year? Okay, uh, do you, first of all, I think that Switzerland and America are not nearly as comparable as America and Canada. For, Why? For so many reasons. <laughs> Switzerland is a tiny, <laughs> tiny nation known for banking chocolate in Europe. <laughs> and <laughs> so does Canada know? <laughs> Peace. Leaves? And being right next to the Swiss US. Swiss myth. Yes, precisely. <laughs> <laughs> being very close to the US with a very similar population, especially in terms of size. I think, um, first of all, I don't think Switzerland has 310 million guns in circulation. I said per capita. I okay, said. per capita. Do you know what the population of Switzerland is? Uh, not off the top of my head. I would guess it's under 10 million people. Do you know what the population of the U.S. is? Yes. Well. <laughs> well, your yes, the statistics that you had mentioned were suicide rates, homicides, and domestic violence, all of which I compared in my debate to be lower than the United States on a per capita basis. And if it works in this, if you're going to say controlled experiment, then how come, how, how okay, come all right, it, has, all right. it has to be isolated fair in the United enough, States fair and enough. Canada? What are your, what's your understanding of the gun control legislation in the Switzerland? Do they have background checks, I assume? I assume they have to... They actually probably have everything that I called for in my solution, which is um, five-year recurring cycle of background checks and training, <coughs> cap on mag capacity, and a ban on bus stocks. There is no cap on mag capacity in Switzerland. But I do have one more question for you. If the, everyone in the United States was armed and knew how to own a firearm or how to use a firearm, how would our crime rate be any different from that of Switzerland? That's time. Thank you. Thank you. Let's have the rebuttal <laughs> now, please. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, that was Oh, sorry. Oh, wait. Wait. Go ahead. Okay. My turn. Begin, please. Right time. My opponent has continually argued for the banning of weapons and restriction, restricting the constitutionally guaranteed rights of all Americans, like the audience here, and does so unsuccessfully. I disagree with my opponent's solution simply because it would perpetuate a stronger government and a weaker citizen. Criminals, that I, as I had mentioned throughout my debate, will still get their hands on everything from fully automatic rifles to handguns, irrespective of the legality or their ability uh, to obtain such weapons. My opponent's argument perpetuates that more guns in society leads to more crime. But look at the prime example of Switzerland and their gun culture. <laughs> Over there, everyone owns and knows how to shoot a gun. From a young age, it is instilled into their culture to be responsible, to know how to shoot this weapon, and know how to protect a fellow citizen in the case of a violent crime. And what was the result? One-tenth of, one of the violent crime occurs on a per capita basis. Remember that. 
per capita basis <laughs> in Switzerland than it does in the United States. It's not uncommon to see people carrying rifles in the street or holstering a pistol in a restaurant. At the same time, Switzerland has, one of, as I said, low, one of the lowest violent crime rates in the world. Isn't it the same people who argue that weapons should be banned that point to European countries for having better governance in the United States? Why not take them up on their example and mitigate our violent crime rate by enabling our citizens? Therefore, I propose that we should arm everybody, protect everybody, and create a very sensical culture here in the United States of responsible gun ownership, just like the example in Switzerland. Thank you. Thank you very much. Let's hear your final remarks, hopefully in the method using four steps of refutation. Mm -hmm. He said, I disagree because therefore. My opponent has said, um, a lot about could you move over that way? So she, <laughs> could you move over that way so she can have the podium? You need to move way over. Yeah. No, you you stay in the center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you go, 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 go. My opponent said a lot about Switzerland and suggests that the U.S., which is a completely different country, should model its gun control and um, gun ownership laws off that tiny country that is likely an outlier instead of turning to neighbors like. Australia or the UK or literally any other developed country, <coughs> not Switzerland. Um, my opponent has also said that Second Amendment rights are infringed upon by a solution to this problem. However, we disagree, I disagree because Second Amendment rights should not and cannot take precedence over the safety of our streets. Therefore, we should not no, no, arm no, no, everyone. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. As constitutional law professor David S. Cohen wrote in the 2016 Rolling Stone article, when the Second Amendment was written, the founders didn't have to weigh the risks of one man killing 49 and injuring 53 all by himself in 10 minutes. Today we do, and the risk-benefit analysis of 1791 is flatly irrelevant to the risk-benefit analysis of today. Um, yeah, the Second Amendment shouldn't force us to live in fear of being easily murdered. Um, it's time to learn from the rest of the world and resolve a uniquely American problem with a, a uniquely American solution. The idea of arming everyone is so dangerous, it is ludicrous. Therefore, we should definitely not arm everyone. Thank you very much. Okay, it's time for you to cross the house and shake hands and congratulate each other on a good debate. It's time for the class to now vote. How much time do we have, Arm? Yeah, uh, five minutes. Five minutes. Five minutes. Can I have the ballot, please? Thank you, sir. One more, one more. <laughs> Okay, quiet please. On a
on a 4 to 13 decision. It goes to the opposition. Quickly. Oh, oh wait. I thought that was the <laughs> <laughs> At least I got four. Uh, four for quickly. <laughs> quickly. I want to hear from somebody. Uh, you haven't spoken. <laughs> I just thought that that Ryan had like uh, a harder position to take, but it was still like pretty persuasive for what he was arguing and the evidence was still on the side. Great, thank you. Yes, thank um, you. I actually thought you did really well. Um, I was really unsure how it was going to go, but I really liked your argument. I thought it was really persuasive. Um, I think both of you spent way too much time on Switzerland versus Canada. <laughs> I, I don't think that's super significant, like whatever. Yeah. There are better arguments to be made, but I thought you made a good point. It's like uh, you addressed the whole gun like violence really well, saying like, yeah, we already have this problem because despite the gun control, like people are getting guns. So I thought that was very, like, you framed the debate as the government team, like, very well. So that's why I voted for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think anybody else want to have Bernie to speak? Let me, let me say a couple things. Um, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Hey, Paul, I think that was, diff it was a very difficult topic for you to, to defend, and all your, both your points were just great. It's the only comment I can Yeah. Uh, uh, Bianca was relying on what I thought was the laughing him out of the room comment. <laughs> I really, I really honestly was trying not to, but I, okay. even I laughed at myself. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just say a few things. Common sense of, we couldn't possibly give everyone a gun, but he had a very serious proposal of training people and making sure that they knew how to operate the guns and, and they could use them in dangerous situations and if he had some places where this had been tried and it worked he might have had a more compelling case uh, if, <laughs> if he had an analogous situation and the, the, that therein lies the problem with arguing from analogy how analogous is Switzerland how analogous is Canada <coughs> And um, uh, I would like to go back to Haley. How do you, since you voted on the app, how would you have made a better case for solvency for this? Solvency <laughs> <laughs> for, I mean... For the affirmative, for arming everybody. How would you, because you have to, you have to yeah. give some people some indication that it's worked somewhere. Other than just in theoretically, you know, if you had a lot of really careful people with guns. Um, uh, there, I mean, the only thing I know that, I mean, I of course don't know like everything, but there are like some like neighborhoods and stuff where like you can see where it's well known that people are armed. There are actually less like crimes and like um, less break-ins because people are very aware that everyone is armed versus like um, places that aren't. So maybe something like that. Okay. All right. Uh, I want to give you all your exam. And um, maybe. Yes, I do. Okay. Yeah, here it is. It's uh, two pages. So uh, would, you, would you assist me in distributing it? There you go. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Wait, this is please write your examples from the BDS debates. Did you mean prison debates? Yeah, prison debates, yeah. <laughs> Where it says BDS, use prison debates. Yeah. Did you get one? Well, there's some that didn't go. Yeah, I'm my policy book on the final uh, carbon tax um, that we should have carbon tax. Yeah, when you write me, you put it in writing, and I approve it. No, because you don't send emails. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, unless you No, are you, are you a... Uh, well, let me say one thing. Yeah, I haven't said this directly to this class, 
If you are a uh, Yahoo boy or girl, you s anybody you have a Yahoo account? Okay, well that's why Yahoo doesn't come through to UCLA. Oh, I doesn't come through. It won't come through. So you got. So if you email me, email me again. I have been responding and I will respond. But some of you have not emailed me whatsoever, and I will respond. And some of you I have responded to, and I, w I want you to get approval of your topic. Okay? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah. And, so, and if it's too late, if you're going to go next week, you know, or you can bring it next week. Yeah. Uh, so Just bring it so, next so week. So next yeah. Thursday, this is due as well as the quarter brief assignment. Yeah. This is, yeah, thank you, Armand. Yeah, this is due, your final winning exam, and the quarter brief assignment is due next Thursday. Is it 20 pages, wait, wait, wait. Uh, double spaced? Yeah, it's, yes. it's the final the paper plus the yes. last brief. Huh? You're, the, you're in a major research university. Get used to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. did you get a different email? Huh? Yeah, I, I sent you the email. No, but Yahoo doesn't. I, do, I use also my brand name one one four at gmail.com. I use both. I never you got send back. it again. I never got yeah, any email. Get that the note. Yeah, I'm just doing carpentry. I want to see the wording. The oh, yeah. Be it resolved. Yeah, the U.S. federal government should. I need the agent of action. I need what action they're taking. Okay. I'm going to have a I can't ask you to go get a coffee right now. Okay, Armand, where's Ar is Armand leaving? Okay, I'm screwed. Okay. Is there another class coming in here? Yeah, I think so. Oh, shit. Yeah, but you still are showing. Uh, yeah, but can you just take a look at it? I'll, I'll do it again. Yeah, everyone's going to want me to do this. I have to get out of this room. And I have a 4 o'clock makeup to do over in the comm office. So can you walk over there with me? Sure. And help me pack, and then we'll go over there and do it. Okay, help me pack. I just sent you an email on my UCLA account. And you didn't hear, what's your name? Elizabeth. And what's your topic? Uh, the ban potentially uh, dangerous speech on college campus against it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got that, but I, 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 it's a difficult thing to respond to quickly. That goes in my uh, yellow box. These all go in the yellow box. Okay. And the cross will break.